With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Bet MGM studio. On this edition of Titans All Access, Dave McGinnis takes us beneath the surface to examine the hard work of wide receiver Calvin Ridley. We take a trip of a lifetime with a Titans assistant coach and his wife. We visit with a Titan looking to make a big move in year two, running back Tajay Spears. We introduce you to neighbors in the Titans locker room, and of course, Titans All Access features the head coach. Each week, Amy and I get a chance to sit down with Brian Callahan to get his thoughts on the previous game and the upcoming game. We call it Callie's Corner, and it's presented by SeatGeek. There's a lot of conversation about the big guys on this Titans defense, but Harold Landry had two sacks in this last game against the Jets, and he kind of continues to be this presence within the defense. What does he contribute? Just that. I mean, there's a when you have an edge rusher that gets production on the quarterback, and then you have two interior players that are ha difficult to handle, it affects the way that the quarterback feels. I mean, we, we all know that when the quarterback feels pressure and they get hit, they don't like it. Um, and Harold's done a really good job of producing on the quarterback. And a lot of, two, one of the sacks this week and one of them last week was really because of the unselfishness of Jeff Simmons' rush. You know, they're in, they're in a game and Jeff, all Jeff's job to do is just to occupy and penetrate vertically and Harold's looping and Harold does a great job finishing the loop. You touched on uh, Calvin Ridley in our last segment. What we saw yesterday, four catches, 77 yards and a touchdown, one rush for a touchdown. Is that just kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of how you see him being able to be used in this offense? I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that there's a whole lot of people that can cover Calvin Ridley. Right. Mm -hmm. And we felt like Calvin's Calvin's ability to, to run vertically with speed and to change direction and make cuts and get out of the break makes him a really unique player. And there's not a lot of guys that can do what Calvin does. We move him all over the place. Um, we put a lot on his plate uh, mentally. He does a great job handling it. Uh, both in the run game and in the pass game. So let's talk about Sunday's opponent in the Green Bay Packers because teams that rush, they wow. had 53 rushes for 261 yards against Indianapolis, and that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sure really see NFL teams that committed to running the football. How hard does that make game planning on your defensive staff? It's a little bit different for us on the other side because they have a new coordinator. But for them, like at least Matt's been there for a while. The style of offense is, is you can go back and watch some things and what they like to do and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you're getting ready for a team that's going to try to run it right at you. Our team has responded well to that for the most part through two games, and that's going to be a tough. That's going to be a tough matchup when you just when it's going to be a almost old school approach in that regard. If they're going to run it that many times, then um, you got to be ready to to go defend it that many times and. and make it so they don't want to run it that many times. Do you go into this week with the thought, okay, we're going to prepare for Jordan Love? Is that how you is that how you think about it or do you even think about it? Absolutely. I know we'll we'll watch we'll watch all that. Jordan's been turned into a, a really nice quarterback in the league and Henson had really finished his season really well last year and had a good opening game and I do believe that if he's got a chance to play, he'll try to be out there for his team. We have to be ready for for that prospect, but you also got to prepare for Malik. Malik's a capable and talented player, and I liked a lot of things about what Malik did for us in the preseason. It turns out this opportunity was the right one for him. He had a chance to go play, and that was that was what we were hoping for, and I'm happy that, he, that he's played well. For more of our conversation with Brian Callahan, we invite you to enjoy the OTP. You can watch the OTP on the Titans YouTube channel or at TennesseeTitans.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the OTP wherever you get your podcasts. There is only one official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP. Stay tuned. More Titans All Access right after this. This is one of the biggest races in the world. You know, Miss America, the World Series, they're down here. The Dachshund Dash, presented by DraftKings, is up here and one of the most elite sports events of the year. So we get up, we run 10 miles, then we usually lift. Um, he benches about 225 at the gym every day. Ozzy won't let 
Odie show him up again. So Odie and Ozzy were best friends. They were training alongside each other. We had to part ways due to creative differences. It was basically like the movie Challengers, but with dogs and no tennis. You can take a dog out of the shelter, but you can't take the shelter out of the dog. Marty's big, a little too big. It's almost suspicious. Performing in enhancing dog food? That's ridiculous. Here he's like 18, almost 19 pounds. And yes, he was 12 when we got him, but that's because he's a rescue. <laughs> Most dachshunds go by wiener dog. Odie goes by winner dog. Win at all costs. costs. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. In year two, Tajay Spears switched his jersey number to two from 32. But nothing else has changed about Spears. He's still energetic, enthusiastic, and ready to take on the world. You'll experience all that and more as Amy Wells interviews this week's Nissan Insider, number two, Tajay Spears. Tajay, there's so many different things we need to talk about because everything has changed. But the thing that I think we have to start with is you have a new number. Yeah. Why did you change to the number two? I chose two because that was half of 22. And my dad's birthday is on the 22nd, so that's still a two. I think two is, two is my favorite number. It's just a lot of um, meaning come out of two. So you were able to find a number and kind of pull the thread. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, because I, I, I like everything I do. It's like it's for me, but it's like you know, it's for my family too. So like, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to live up to all my goals. Like I want to be legendary one day, and, and the goal is to get into the Hall of Fame. And like my path's going to look way different from a lot of people. It already, it already does. It already has been. So I'm, I'm eager to see, you know, what's in front of me. What other aspects of your career are you incredibly intentional about? You know, we're in a, we're in a league where like the margin of error is small, so we got to be intentional about everything we do. Like, I got a board that I read off at home uh, every morning, like, you know, just trying to, like, get my mind wrapped around the day. And one of the things on there is being intentional. So it, every, like, every step I take and everything I do, I try to be intentional as I can. And, like, when I get out of line, like, nah, bro, this, this ain't true. And, like, I try to get back in line. You have a new running backs coach in Randy Jordan. What is it like working with him? How is he helping you be intentional with your game? He's going to push us every day, and we're going we're gonna to push him, too. And it's like, it's been nothing but, but joy, you know what I'm saying? Cause like he get after us and like we get after it. And like, but at the end of the day, like we feel, we feel the love and we feel like, we feel the love, we feel the bond. And also he's one of the best. Okay, so how does Tony Pollard contribute to that kind of chemistry and that vibe in the room? He more like cool, laid back. He make jokes, crack jokes and play a lot. And he be, he be, uh, he, he very detailed too. Like he uh, try to, he try to get everything right. But I was just like, you know me, I come. I'm like a little brother. I like I like to play. I play all day. You've got a friend on the team, Jaquan Jackson. Yeah. We got to talk about it a little bit because you genuinely seem to be so excited for your friend and for the experience he's having. What's it like having him on the team to be teammates again? Uh, it's amazing. Like um, I was just thinking about it the other day. Like y'all just don't know half of the stuff that we went through. Um, like just from injuries, from like hard days at camp. Like me telling him, like, bro, you got to go. To him telling me, like. Bro, let's go, you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, you want me to tell you the truth, that's probably like the closest brother I done had. And I got five brothers. I, they might be mad at me for saying it, but that's, you know what I'm saying, that's real. Like, he's a real person, so I'm I'm, ex I'm super excited to see his growth. So now having him here, are you the guy that's showing the ropes, or do you let him get with the receivers and kind of do his own thing, too? You know, like, I'm here. I'm here, like, to, you know, when he get off his path, I'm here to, because I've been a year, I'm, I'm definitely voicing back his head every day when we go home, but I just want him to find his own feet and let him know and let him build his own confidence that he's supposed to be here. He's going to show y'all, he's going to work for it, too. Are you excited about what's to come? I'm super excited. I feel like the best is yet to come. When Titans All Access continues, this is really cool. Titans defensive line coach Tracy Rocker and his wife share a parent's dream. The chance to see their child achieve something remarkable. Share their journey and the memories next. Every parent dreams of seeing their children achieve their dreams. But what if it was about to happen, you knew when and where it was going to happen, but you could not be there? You'd be miserable, right? But what if some people who genuinely cared about you stepped up and made it happen? That would be amazing, right? 
That story played out last week, and Titans assistant coach Tracy Rocker and his wife Lou were the beneficiaries of some kindness. If you feel like you know Titans defensive line coach Tracy Rocker, it's because he's been a part of your football world for nearly four decades. A college football Hall of Fame defensive tackle at Auburn, a college football assistant coach at multiple SEC schools, including Tennessee, and even a member of the Tennessee Titans staff once before, from 2011 to 2013. We also saw him quite a bit locally when his son Kumar became an All-American pitcher at Vanderbilt. So when Kumar Rocker got the call to make his Texas Rangers debut in Seattle late last week, Titans fans wondered if the man known simply as Rock would have a chance to be there. Tracy Rocker had resigned himself to the fact that he could not make it to Seattle because the Titans had practice on Friday morning. He could get to Seattle on a commercial flight on Thursday, but he couldn't make it back in time for Friday's practice. He asked no one for the time off. But Rand Carthon and Brian Callahan wanted Tracy Rocker and his wife Lou to be there. They asked Amy Adams Strunk for the special use of a team plane to make the cross-country flight and she readily agreed. The Texas Rangers had a car waiting to take them to T-Mobile Park, and the couple shared a parent's experience of a lifetime. Tracy Rocker was back in time for practice on Friday, yes, but that's not the big finish to this story. It is time to rock out in Seattle. And that is a fastball strike three called, and Raleigh strikes out looking, and there's the first strikeout in the career of Kamar Rocker. First pitch to Rayleigh, and that one lined out to right field, and back there for Jankowski. He does get out of the jam, and yeah, Mom and Dad, you should be pumped. The four-inning debut of Kumar Rocker made all the effort worth it for everyone involved. Jets have two receivers to the left. Wilson to the right. It's time for the decision of the week, brought to you by Hughes and Coleman. Rucker at the tight end, Hall on the left hip. The Titans' decision to trade for linebacker Ernest Jones is already paying dividends. In his first start at Nissan Stadium, Jones led Tennessee with nine tackles and two tackles for lost yardage. Taking the hand up there, that, no, 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 don't even try that. Oh, yeah. Ernest Jones. Wow! Oh, I love wow! Jones makes plays in the run game, blitzing the quarterback, and even in pass coverage. Ernest Jones is a defensive force to be reckoned with for the Titans. He's going to work Allen to the left. There's Jones. Jones with a form tackle. No game. Rodgers empties the backfield again. On third and ten, Rodgers feeling some heat. Fires. Got to complete the haul. No. No. Not happening. Taken down for a loss in the right flat by Jones. The decision of the week brought to you by Hughes and Coleman, the official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. Levis gives fly sweep Ridley racing to the corner inside the five. Gardner. Okay, yeah. He didn't get it. Touchdown, Titans! Gardner hit him, but he didn't get him soon enough as Ridley broke the plane to give the Tennessee Titans their first score and his first ever rushing touchdown. That's some speed. Welcome back to Titans All Access. You just saw what Calvin Ridley is capable of. Ridley adds the elements of a world-class athlete to the Titans receivers room. But as Dave McGinnis observed at a recent Titans practice, Ridley hones his craft every day with hard work and attention to detail. The very first thing when I walked out here early, the first receiver out on the field, Calvin Ridley. They're, they're just warming up right now. The timing, the complimentary routes, that, that's what they are working on right now. But you've got a very veteran player that is a threat. So today, we'll look at uh, Calvin Ridley and watch him practice a little bit. His skill set complements D-Hop and complements Tyler Boyd. Here's the press release. He's, he's working on press release. Watch the swipe. They're using an inside arm swipe, and he's having them catch it with their outside hand. 
one, one handed. And the reason he's doing that is, is because most of the time, if a defensive back is in phase on the inside, they may restrict that inside arm. And so that outside arm will always be free. So if you watch what he's having them do, not only he's having them release, but then catching with their outside arm. So that's important because these receivers, especially those that are on the line of scrimmage, are going to get they're going to they're going to get pressed because they know how quick this offense wants to throw the football. Tyke is working on it. it's showing them their footwork right now as far as cleats in the ground to be able to get a good power base. Of course, I know Tyke very well. I hired him for his first job in the National Football League when I was a head coach at Arizona. He's very detailed, and it's repetitive detail, repetitive detail, which is extremely important. Tyke Tobert is going to be working here with Calvin Ridley, who, uh, I mean, he, he, right now he's out there, you know, talking to him about some individual things that he wants to work on today. Now we're working on two complementary routes. First level drag across the middle over here on the left side. On that route, if it's man to man, he'll continue to run across. If he reads zone, he'll sit down right over the football. Let's go down here and see what they're working on now. This is a timing throw. That ball's got to be out. Got, the ball's got to be out before they make their cut. All right, here's Calvin going again. He's got a top of the number split. One, two, three, inside. Perfect throw. Perfect throw by Levis. That's a perfect throw you want. Catch him right here, just, just below the shoulder pads high so he can continue to run. Let's see the route that he runs. Here it is. That's that deep dig that they were working on. You saw it right there, the complimentary route underneath the shallow cross. Stop, take off out here on the, on the, on the, on the back side. Ball should go right there. To the guy that we're highlighting today, number zero, Calvin Ridley, he sat down in the zone. Remember that individual we watched over here where they were working off man zone where they sat down? That's the way it's supposed to work. But we saw that progression from individual to group to seven on seven. This is a city built on grid. Grace. A city for dreamers. Are you being harder? Are you being harder? Doers. Makers. And miracles. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. A city with music in its soul. And ice in its veins. A city where legends are born and history is made. He's got it on the run! Third touchdown of the day! A city built by One, two, three. Right. Titans. I'm Morgan Cox. And I'm Ryan Stonehouse. And this is Neighbors. Action! Between you and your neighbor, who can build a better paper airplane? Oh, shoot. I've forgotten how to do this. Oh, it's coming back to me. Oh, it's really coming back to me now. I messed that up. Oh, that didn't. Come on. Ha oh, yes, sir. That's nice. That was a stealth wow. moment right there. I know, I know. I feel like, like adrenaline. I know. All right, here we go. Describe your neighbor in three words. Describe your neighbor in three words. Um. <laughs> you know exactly what I want to say. We got happy, energetic, and red. World's best long snapper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I knew I'd get him. <laughs> I really wanted to say old, but I was very kind. You should have said that. I was very kind in this process. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What is your neighbor's middle name? God. David. Right. Not mine. It's not mine either. Oh, no. Matthew. Morgan. Yeah, Morgan. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. First name Charles. First name oh, Charles. Oh yes. Dude. I knew that. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, pen. Make your neighbor a friendship bracelet. In 30 seconds? Uh, you get a minute. A minute? Oh no. Okay. 
Uh, is that an M or a W? I'm second guessing myself. Yeah, this is not easy. I don't even know if this is gonna make sense. Oh, of course you do. I know exactly what you're doing. No, I'm not. You don't know what I'm doing. I was nice earlier. And th this is just shows name? our true friendship, right here. This embodies, this is the work of art, actually. You better actually wear this. I mean. They should Sorry. play that sound. Doo, Sorry. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. There we go. That is really, really amazing. I said, he's something he always says, let's go. Oh, and then TTFU. That's really, that's really nice. <laughs> that's really nice. Mine says Morg is old. Wow. <laughs> true friendship. See, I mean, it, but I did put the O and the L and the D on backwards, but. And that's neighbors. That's some good stuff with Morgan Cox and Ryan Stonehouse. They're kind of cute together. They do it very well. Both those guys and 50 or so others will be at Nissan Stadium <laughs> this Sunday as the Titans host the Green Bay Packers. Coach Dave McGinnis joins Amy, me, and the entire Titans radio team at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern for Titans Countdown. Kickoff, 12.02 Central. The Titans host the Packers on Titans radio stations throughout the region, and we hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.